Velvet Buzzsaw is a straight to Netflix production uh, that's written and directed by Dan Gilroy and it stars Jake Gyllenhaal as an incredibly snooty and pretentious art critic. And for those who don't know who Dan Gilroy is, uh, he wrote and directed both Roman J. Israel-esque and Nightcrawler, which Nightcrawler at this point seems to be his most notable work and was honestly the entire reason why I was really excited to see this film. And after watching Velvet Buzzsaw, I gotta say, um, I still found this to be an enjoyable experience despite the fact that, that there were actually tons of things about this movie that really bugged me, and it mostly has to do with the writing and directing. But before I really dive into the negativity, uh, let me explain why I found this film to be mostly enjoyable overall. Firstly, it's really hard for me not to appreciate a film where I can tell that it's really effortful with its creativity, and you can really tell that it's actually coming from somebody's mind. And that's really the hugest compliment I can give this film, is that it doesn't feel like it was manufactured, and it doesn't feel like the sole intention behind this film was to make money. Because one thing I noticed about this film is that the marketing for it was basically non-existent. Um, you know, I, I expected it to be right there on Netflix because it just came out and, you know, I'm scrolling through all the trending movies and all the new releases and it's nowhere to be found anywhere. I actually had to manually type the movie's name in order for me to actually find it. And that's just kind of weird, like, especially for a brand new Netflix thriller movie that's starring Jake Gyllenhaal. I just found it odd that they were not pushing this film at all. But as I actually started watching the film, it kind of started clicking and started making a lot of sense, um, you know, as to why they weren't really marketing this film that much and really putting any kind of money towards trying to promote it. Uh, just because the content on its own, it just isn't very relatable for a, you know, wide audience. Because really the entire film is about like the intrinsic value of art and how humanity kind of takes it for granted at times. And also, you know, the pacing of it and the way it delivers its shock value just isn't on par to what, uh, just really not on par to what general audiences would really expect out of a horror thriller film. But I really did still highly appreciate, uh, that this film was at least trying to do something different and trying to do something that was unique. I mean, I'm sure it's not that creative or unique because nothing's really original at this point of human history, but you know what I'm saying. But like I said, I, I was fascinated by the thematic context of this film. Uh, in terms of how it like desperately wanted to say something about how humanity treats art. And honestly, that was one of the main things that really kept me engaged throughout this film. That and Jake Gyllenhaal's performance, which was both excellent and kind of hilarious because his character plays this really stuck up, weaselly art critic. His character is like a caricature of what a critic would be. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that there are obviously some critics out there that act just like that. But he is like the spitting image of what most people that hate critics uh, envision when they hear about a critic. And I just found it quite impossible to not be entertained by that kind of character and to not be amused by that kind of image. Um, excellent performance, though. I mean, I found it to be very convincing and hilarious at the same time. Tony Collette is also in this film, which is another reason why I, I kind of really wanted to watch it because I just think she's a great actress. But... Her character's pretty awesome in this film as well. It kind of another one of those uh, snooty critics, but she kind of represents the more corrupt side of the art industry. And I really, again, like her, her, her performance is really great in this film. And she just acts so naturally, like, like as if she's not even trying. And that's what I love about her because it's just when you're watching her in a film, it doesn't look like she's trying. And when I was watching this film, it reminded me of how the Academy just completely undervalued her performance by just not nominating her for giving pretty much the best performance of the year. And it just really pissed me off. But besides those two excellent performances and also my natural appreciation for creative efforts, uh, this film ran into a lot of different issues that really dragged the film down. I guess the first issue that comes to mind is a clear aesthetic one because the way that this film is presented and the way that it was produced it just comes off really, like, it just lacks a visual atmosphere that I can really get immersed in. It looks and it feels just hollow. And I think that's just because the lighting and the cinematography were just blah. They just came out, it was just really bland lighting and camera work. Same goes for the score. The score sounds like 
it's literally just there because they knew that they needed one. And, you know, it tries to have some kind of, you know, tonal personality by kind of having this awkward uppity music in the beginning and sometimes throughout the film, but it just never really landed it. And it also tends to clash with some of the more suspenseful and thrilling tonal music um, that comes near the third act and also in the second act. But just the score overall was just, it just wasn't that memorable, like at all, or even really immersive. But really, my central issue with this film has to do with both the writing and directing. Because this film overall just at times felt really aimless and redundant. For instance, in terms of directing, there is this one scene uh, where it really tries to do this cool like sweeping one shot sequence at an art gallery where there's like a bunch of art critics that are discussing what they're seeing. And at one moment the camera goes, you know, it, it starts heading towards somebody's champagne glass. It just goes right through it, you know, by using editing techniques and CGI, and then it just keeps going. And in my head, I'm just like, why did they do that? Like, it's not like that hinted at anything. It's not like that foreshadowed anything. So what was the point of doing that? Like, besides the fact that you just kind of wanted to add a flashy moment in your movie. And also the overall narrative structure of the film, again, just felt really aimless and senseless at times. And... I honestly think that it's just because Dan Gilroy wrote in too many characters in the film that he thought would be important, and they're not. He tries to give essentially almost equal time to each character in this film, and once it ends, you realize that none of them were really deserving of that equal time because a lot of those characters just kind of am just amounted up to nothing and didn't really add anything purposeful to the story. And this also consequently resulted and the more interesting and the more entertaining characters in this film, like Jake Gyllenhaal and Tony Collette, uh, to be kind of be underused and pushed to the side as if they're as if they're just some other side character and not a central character at all. And that kind of sucks because to me, Jake Gyllenhaal's character was the most entertaining and the most interesting character in the film, even if he was a smarmy little douchebag. I also found the dialogue to be kind of cringy at times, especially during the segments that apparently were solely dedicated. To exposition and explaining part of the story because this film apparently it just felt like they had no idea how to convey this information in any other way so when a time came that they wanted to you know explain certain background information of a certain character or explain something of the mystery that's that's kind of unraveling in this film it's either just a character going on a long just like monologue about all, the, all this information about a character or it's just a really lazily written conversation between two characters as they kind of answer each other's questions. And that was just extremely underwhelming for me. And that's not really supposed to happen because this information is being told to me is apparently incredibly vital and crucial information regarding the film. And I'm just bored by it. And I'm really, I'm really not interested in what's happening. And even though I was fascinated by the thematic content of this film in terms of humanity and art, um, I was pretty underwhelmed by the fact that I was able to predict basically its entire approach and its entire twist um, solely on the trailer that I watched. Uh, because in my trailer reaction, if you haven't watched it already, please go check it out, I speculated that you know this film was probably going to take the approach of art somehow able to take revenge back on humanity for how it's treating it and how it's you know, how they're marketing it and how they're critiquing it. And it's going to somehow find a way to get back at humanity. And that's essentially what the film's story ended up being all about. And, you know, of course, that's not a fault of the filmmaker, but it's a fault of the marketing in the trailer. The trailer definitely showed way too much of the film because not only did it reveal its kind of thematic approach and the kind of twist that it was going for, but it also just showed way too much of the deaths. Because there's only like a nice handful of deaths that actually occur in this movie and most of them occur in the third act so it really makes you wait for it. But the trailer shows basically all of the main characters die and kind of how they die. And I mean of course it doesn't show it in explicit detail but it really the, the trailer does give away how each main character is going to die and that's just underwhelming to know exactly how they're going to die before you even watch the movie. But even if I didn't watch the trailer and know how these people were going to die, 
The deaths still really weren't that great. The only one that I thought was like jaw-droppingly awesome was Tony Collette's death because not only did it just go all the way with it in terms of blood and gore, but it also kind of had a humorous, clever subtext to it as well. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, modern art and how our generation kind of perceives it. But the rest of the deaths in this film, you know, lacked like honest suspense and tension. Um, especially the one that you see in the trailer where the colors of the painting start to kind of absorb her body. Uh, that's the way, it's like, I, I actually really like the concept of that. And I think that it can be disturbing if done right. But it just, the way that it was done just came off incredibly flat. But just the way that it was directed. This film was honestly filled with potential. But I feel like, unfortunately, a lot of it was squandered due to lackluster writing and directing. But overall, overall, I was fascinated by the thematic approach and I found it pretty relatable to me. Uh, this film does genuinely have a few great moments in it. And like I said, I, I really do appreciate a film that's, you know, trying to make something a little bit more unique, despite the fact that it knows it probably won't make much money back from it. But unfortunately, it just really suffers from mediocre aesthetics, writing, and directing that just really dragged the film down for me. But overall, I'm going to give the Straight to Netflix production from the creator of Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, called Velvet Buzzsaw, a 6 out of 10. The film's got a refreshing, unique approach. It's got a nice creative effort, but it just unfortunately misses the mark on a lot of different phases. And I know just me saying that kind of makes me sound like the kind of douchey, snobby film critics that are depicted in this movie. Critique is so limiting and emotionally draining. But it's just the way I feel, so... And I'd really hate to say this, but the scent of Dan Gilroy is starting to really smell like a one-trick pony because he made, at least I'm only aware of three films that he's made now, and the only one that was brilliant was Nightcrawler, and everything else really doesn't even come close to touching how outstanding that film was. But I really hope that he comes out with something awesome soon because if he can bring back that talent that made Nightcrawler so amazing, um, we can get tons of just wonderful gems of movies, but I don't know what he's doing lately. Like lately he's just, it's like blah. Like he's just making films that are just coming out like blah. But that's all I got to say about Velvet Buzzsaw. Uh, please don't forget to follow me on other social media sites like Twitter, Facebook, and Letterboxd. I'm on all those. If you want to catch me on those, just search my name, The Misfit Pond. I'll put the links in the description box so that way it can be a lot easier for you. And uh, if you really like what I had to say about Velvet Buzzsaw, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content. Mm -hmm.